The following is a video presentation from the Environmental Change and Security Program at the Woodrow Wilson International Center for Scholars. EZSP Report 13 features a set of commentaries on new directions in demographic security. Seven experts explore the links connecting population dynamics and environmental conditions to conflict. In this short preview, Cleona Raleigh, lecturer at Trinity College Dublin, discusses her article, Climate Change, Demography, Environmental Degradation, and Armed Conflict. She and co-author Henrik Ertl find that while some demographic and environmental factors can increase the risk of civil conflict, they are generally outweighed by political and economic ones. Uh, hello, I'm Dr. Kleena Raleigh from Trinity College in Dublin, and I'm an external researcher at the International Peace Research Institute at, in Oslo, uh, called PRIO. <coughs> um, Henrik Ertl and I wrote an article on armed conflict, environmental degradation, and climate change, which will appear in this year's report. Um, and this was our attempt to look at how environmental changes, particularly scarcity, impacted uh, armed conflict, particularly civil war, on a subnational level in developing countries. And so we used geospatial information on land degradation, water scarcity, and population pressure from 1990 to the present, and looked at how that impacted whether or not an area saw armed conflict. Um, within these states, but of course we also included whether or not states were uh, poor or whether or not they experienced political instability. And what we were trying to do is to understand what level of risk is imposed upon um, a region because of scarcity issues um, and whether or not people would be more prone to re revolt given those scarcity issues. And what we find after doing a logistic regression of, uh, of geospatial information on a gridded data set is that very high levels of land degradation and water scarcity are not related to increases in armed conflict. Um, medium levels of land degradation almost are, and so in that way we, we recognize some sort of a threshold effect. Um, and population density and growth are highly correlated to conflict, and they remain highly correlated across multiple studies. But very importantly, the GDP of a state, in fact the GDP even on a subnational level, and political instability of a state have a much stronger effect on whether or not an area will see armed conflict than whether there was degradation or relative or absolute scarcity. And so this told us that again, uh, the political and the economic environments that people are operating in are a much stronger determinant to conflict than ecological changes. So then we decided that, and this is in a, in a future paper, that um, perhaps communal conflict would be m most likely to result as a, um, due to environmental scarcity. And we actually are not finding particularly strong results for that. Um, it's much more likely that political groups uh, will will fight with each other over access to resources, but those resources are very broadly defined. They're not necessarily scarcity related. Um, and of course, many people feel like if there isn't a direct link between scarcity and armed conflict, there may be an indirect link um, due to migration and so forth. But internal migration, which is typically what occurs within the developing world, um, is, in, is certainly affected by ecological disasters and ecological changes, but it doesn't appear at this point to be related to increases in armed conflict or communal conflict.